Welcome listeners, but take heed. We will say whatever we need to share our knowledge, thoughts, and joy, and even things that do annoy. So join us now, but be aware, we have a tendency to swear. We'll dial it back a little bit, but frankly, we don't give a shit. Welcome to Just Keep Rolling, a Harry Potter book movie compare and contrast podcast. I'm Ellen, and once again, I'm joined by some of our amazing patrons, as Katie is still recovering from the COVID, though she is thankfully improving. But again, thank you so much for helping me record this episode, y'all. Why don't you tell us who's here with me? Hello, everybody. It's Max, the resident Brit, here again. Hello, everyone. It's Sarah. G'day, g'day, g'day. This is Jackson, your Australian keeper. Hi, it's Ashley Noe. Ashley Noe. That's literally how I say your name in my head whenever I see it. But let's just keep rolling into the rolling rehash. Last week, we covered the first half of the differences between the UK and US versions of the book and our favorite moments discussing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. During episode 115, Wahoo and Wahoos, our Potter pondering was, what are some of your favorite moments covering the first half of Goblet of Fire, either from our podcast or the book and film in general? Hi, Ellen and Katie. This is Ashley with this week's Potter pondering. Nice to have good things to say for once. Because my favorite part of the Goblet of Fire is the kitchens and the house elves. And Dobby, and I really wish you got to see it. I love Dobby. I wish you would have got to see him as a free elf with all his little clothes on. And his layers of socks and his tie over his bare chest. <laughs> that would have been really cute to see. Oh. My goodness, I love Dobby and I love the house elves. The kitchens and Hogwarts they probably just didn't feel like animating all that for us to look at. But that's literally my favorite part. When Hermione, Harry and Ron are down there and Hermione's trying to be all vigilante like, uh, come on you guys, you should be more like Dobby. And Dobby's like, uh, don't put me in your shit, lady. <laughs> I'm trying to be good over here. I'm minding my business. You fucking this up. And all the other house elves are just like shoveling snacks in their hands and pushing them out the door because somebody come down there with that bullshit. Oh, it would have been really nice to see. I want to see Winky too. Those are my favorites. Hey, Ellen. Hey, Katie. Hey, Keepers. It's Jackson here. So today I'm going to talk my pot of pondering on some of my favorite moments covering the first half of Goblet of Fire. So we'll start off with favorite moments from the podcast itself. From the podcast, I would have to say two favorite moments. One, when we got to my favorite moment of the book itself, old Archie in his flowery nightgown. (laughs) Oh God, I was so looking forward to hearing Ellen and Katie read that. And they did not disappoint. They did not disappoint at all. God, that was funny. <laughs> I like a healthy breeze around my privates, thanks. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> hey, oh, God. God, girls, you did a great job. That was awesome. And my other favourite moment in the podcast is when we got to Harry is your in the cup of fire. <laughs> oh, God, that was good. That was good. Loved it. Loved it. Other favourite moments. I think, although it deviated from the book, I really loved the man who played Moody. He's done an amazing job. He's exactly as I figured Matt I Moody would look like. I mean, there are the differences. The metal leg versus wooden leg and, and that silly zoom-in camera effect with the eye. I mean, other than those small differences... He did an amazing job. He did. All right. And uh, yeah, that's it for this week. So catch you on the flip side. And thank you so much for all of your responses. Our trivia question last week was, in the U.S. version, Hagrid serves the Golden Trio cookies with their tea. What do they say he served them in the U.K. version? 
The UK version refers to cookies as biscuits, and that is the correct way to refer to cookies. <laughs> Says the resident Brit. Congratulations goes to Juliana Muma. Wahoo! <laughs> that was a damn good wahoo, Jackson. I think all four of your powers combined pretty much becomes on par with Katie's wahoo. Not her wahoo. <laughs> well, no, not that. Since my guest hosts are again disqualified from participating, we will see who wins this week. For now, let's just keep rolling into the rest of the differences between the UK and US versions of the book and more of our favorite moments discussing Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, starting with Chapter 19, The Hungarian Horntail. When they're out on their nighttime stroll to go see the dragons, in the UK version, Harry tells Hagrid that he's got to be back to the castle for 1 o'clock, but in the US version, he says, by 1 o'clock. Max, is that a thing to say for 1 o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> all, all I'm, all I'm, I'm trying to think back to my school days if we ever had to be somewhere. So you would say, I've got to be back to school because we used to go out to get lunch from the school. So we'd say we've got to be back at the school for one o'clock. Oh, but you'd say bye, but I guess some people would say four. It depends what, it depends who you were, if you were annoying or you're normal. Which one it is the sense. annoying one and which one is the, the formal one? I think I can imagine people who would say four saying, like, oh, I've got to be back for one o'clock. I don't want to be late. And that's the, that's the annoying one. That's fair. Yeah. But it, I mean, it makes sense because I also think of it as I have to be back for my meeting at one o'clock and it just sort of shortens it for one o'clock. So it doesn't bother me. But that's the only one. So here are some of our favorite moments from chapter 19. He is briefly distracted by a copy of the Daily Prophet left sitting on the arm of a chair. He picks it up and sees a picture of himself posing for the camera like a superhero douchebag and briefly wonders if wizarding cameras always add 10 pounds of twat to every photo. <laughs> <laughs> they fall silent and Harry People watches for a bit, noticing Cho sitting nearby. He's slightly cheered to see she isn't wearing a Cedric badge. Cho Cheng! but really wishes he was one of the relaxed people, excited about the first task, not a quad wizard champion. He would still be friends with Ron, he wouldn't be stressed out, and he'd be safe. I mean, is Harry ever really safe? He'd be safer. <laughs> there we go. Moving on, Harry reads the title of the book he is holding, Magical Water Plants of the Highland Locks. Not the Mediterranean like in the book. Like, what the fuck is even the point of that change? I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. Did they just happen to already find a book that was called Magical Water Plants of the Highland Locks and think, hey, it's close enough, we could just use this as a prop? I mean, e even if they did, that is not a good enough reason to randomly change the name of a book for no other, no other reason. reason. That doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense. I'm not okay. Oh, it's such a stupid change. I know we have bigger fish to fry when it comes to changes in this movie, but when they're just so little and stupid and random like that, it's almost more irritating. There's no reason for it. There's literally no, like, it's not one of those things that we can explain away like, oh, cinematography. Oh, well, you can't hear Harry's thoughts in the movie films. Oh, well, and they needed to streamline this or the movie would have been 17 hours long. No, it makes no sense whatsoever. Exactly. Oh, Noel. Noel. <laughs> Hermione argues further with Ron, but eventually gives up and turns to Harry, telling him that Ronald would like her to tell him that Seamus told him that Dean was told by Parvati that Hagrid is looking for him. Just like us, Harry gets immediately defensive. <laughs> <laughs> and he begins to retort, but then realizes he has no clue what was just said. He asks for clarification, and Hermione attempts to pull Ron's head out of his ass so he can tell Harry himself, but that sucker is really wedged in there. So Hermione returns to Harry and attempts to repeat the message. She eventually just says, fuck this, go see Hagrid. Like she should have in the first place. Right. <laughs> Harry begins to respond with something super witty and original because that's usually what happens when someone starts a sentence with, oh yeah, well... <laughs> I mean, it's always a real burn right after that. I'll tell you what. 
But Hermione's done playing telephone and snaps at Harry that she is not an owl, despite being exactly that when Ron asks. She leads Ginny away in a huff, and Ron lingers a moment, staring Harry down before also turning and walking away. I just imagine Harry being like, oh yeah, well, you go tell Ron that my ball said suck him. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would have been okay. <laughs> I would have accepted that. <laughs> and now, chapter 20, the first task. And there are no differences. So here are some of our favorite moments from chapter 20. Though it does include a scene that corresponds with a section of a previous chapter, so it still corresponds, but also doesn't. I feel like that sums up this entire book movie. Pretty much. It still corresponds, but also <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, you can't tell me that she didn't wish she could transfigure students, especially right? Malfoy, when they're being total shits. I almost wish there would have been a scene where McGonagall changes him back into Draco and she goes, oh, it's Malfoy. No, fuck that. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I know he would probably love to forget that he was in Twilight. So he definitely would. However, some of the stuff he's gone on to do. Oh, he's has... super talented. Oh, my gosh. He is very versatile. He really is. Yeah, but we'll probably get to talk about our Pat more in some of the later films. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. He'll be there all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. We hear Dumbledore's magnified voice say that the other three have gone and survived, moving on to the next round with their clues in hand. And now it was time for the last and least likely to survive. Harry motherfucking Potter. The boy on fire. Oh, shit. Wrong fandom. Sorry. <laughs> this boy is, is on fire. <laughs> He's actually not. That's Cedric's theme song. His broom is on fire. fire. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that was awful. We apologize. It was terrible. Once it stops, Harry runs out from behind the rock and jumps in the air, landing right on his broom and all but ensuring the need for some sort of testicle retrieval charm in the future. Axio testicles? That's, I mean, I hope that works. <laughs> honestly. That or it's just a really effective and disturbing way to torture someone. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon hits the top of it, tearing it up a little bit, and more than likely fucking the structural integrity of it before hurtling down after him. I mean, that dragon's done a lot of damage. It really had, like... Do you feel like all of the teachers are sitting there, like, watching this from a distance going, this was a bad idea. <laughs> Hagrid congratulates him and starts to say, well done, Harry, and you know Charlie said the horn tail was the worst, and Harry's just like, shut the fuck no, up. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know anything about any of that. Charlie who? <laughs> <laughs> the only time that line is okay. Right? <laughs> Chapter 21, The House Elf Liberation Front. Again, no differences. So here's some funny-ass shit from Katie and Ellen. Harry tosses the egg to someone in the crowd to show off his pretty new shiny toy. Shiny! Shiny! Because <laughs> that boy's a niffler. Mm -hmm. he just it's is. gold. He loves it. Mm -hmm. He's a fan. I'm surprised he tossed it. Like, no, mine. My precious. <laughs> <laughs> However, there is no speculation as to what the sound could be. Harry just screams, ah, delete, delete, <laughs> and quickly closes the egg back up, and the camera focuses on Ron as he walks in the room with his duck hunt gun, for some reason, and loudly wonders what the bloody hell that was. This part did not happen in the book because it already happened in the last chapter in a nearly completely different fashion. Yeah, they don't even have duck hunt at Hogwarts. <laughs> Dobby's just ahead of his time he on is. fashion. A tea cozy for a hat. Mm-hmm. Bare chested with a tie. That's pretty badass. <laughs> a little sexy. Just saying. Right? Soccer shorts. Oh, baby. What's up? Mismatched socks. That's totally in now. It, it really is. It's a thing. Harry notices that one of Dobby's socks is the black one that Harry had used to trick Nazi von Duschbeck the first into freeing him. I mean, I would save that one, too. For damn sure. That one's got a little special place in his heart. Mm -hmm. And on his feet. And on his foot. <laughs> the house elves that had been listening and watching them all look away like Dobby said something rude. 
paying. paying. Oh, my stars. Oh. <laughs> Let me clutch my little house elf pearls. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you say something so taboo, Dobby? Chapter 22, The Unexpected Task. When Professor McGonagall admonishes Harry and Ron while addressing the whole class by saying, now Potter and Weasley are kind enough to act their age in the UK version, but the US version adds that saying, now that Potter and Weasley are kind enough to act their age. And if we had Carly recording with us today, she's here listening, but not feeling great herself. But if we had her, she would want us to point out that America likes those extra words. We do like extra shit, don't we? Yep. Yay, America. Americans overcomplicate things. And overcompensate things. Oh, bingo. (laughs) And now some of our favorite moments. Hermione brings Ron's attention to this, and Ron just waves Nigel away, saying, Later. Chill the fuck out, dude. Harry and Hermione both aim some ocular darts in Ron's direction until he explains that he told the boy he'd get Harry's autograph for him. See, now here's what I want to know. (laughs) Who the fuck is Nigel? And why couldn't this have just been Colin Creevy? Right? It doesn't make any sense. They literally had that character already for real. Yeah. And they just make up some fucking Nigel. And like, I'm sorry, Nigel is just an old man. Like... (laughs) They don't call kids Nigel. Little children are not Nigel. They grow up and that becomes their name. <laughs> so what do they start off as? Nigel or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's some other name and it morphs into Nigel when they become adults because that's just you know not what? a kid <gasps> name. You know what? I know what Nigel start off as. What? Collins. Colin Creebies. <laughs> or make it Dennis Creeby. I don't care. They were in the story. Make, make it a goddamn Creeby, would you? McGonagall shushes the din by reminding the students that they had better take this shit seriously because Gryffindors are meant to be classy, respected bitches. And she is not going to put up with them fucking that up in one night by behaving like a babbling, bumbling band of baboons. And as long as I live, Maggie Smith's delivery of that line will always be a highlight. It is absolutely amazing, even if it wasn't originally in the book. That's one of those things you can add it all you fucking want. Right. It's one of those very few times where I'm like, you know what? I approve. Mm -hmm. I super approve of that. This declaration causes one of the twins. Obviously, it's Fred. George. 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 Fred. Ah, fuck. Oh, one of the twins to lean over and tell the other twin to try saying that five times fast. And don't lie, y'all did the same thing at some point. Babbling, bumbling, band of baboons. Babbling, Babbling, bumbling, band of baboons. 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 I lost it. I messed it up one of those times, too. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe this is why all the hairdos are so terrible in this movie. Because it's much more believable that he would get so many nasty looks despite having saved the damn world so many times. What with the groundhog nesting on his damn cranium. That could very well be it. Right? He does look like a dorky 14 year old. Mm -hmm. And that horrid hairy hairy hair is not doing him any favors. Ugh. That horrendously horrid hairy hairy hair. It's horrible. He and Madame Maxime laugh heartily and turn to face one another. Maxime finds a beard snack that Hagrid was probably saving for later, and with an incredibly uncomfortable amount of eye contact, she eats it and licks her fingers. I always felt like it was a fucking insect or something. That scene was so uncomfortable. That's kind of what I thought it was, too. I thought it was like a bug. Like, she just full-on monkeyed him. Yeah. She just picked a nit. And ate it. She's a nit picker. And an eater. (laughs) pretty gross cue some more uncomfortable eye contact and hagrid then becomes the king of segways and tells her that his father died just when he started school so he had to make his own way cheery conversation yeah thanks for eating my beard snack my dad's dead i'm gonna make you cry now (laughs) and i felt like maxine was a little bit awkward in this scene too like aside from eating out of his beard right she was just like oh And she never said anything except for that weird, like, laugh. Yeah. 
She gives like the weird laugh. She eats out of his beard and then she's just sad. Yeah. Well, she kind of leans towards him in, during that pause. Like she's going to kiss him or like something? She, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought that's what she was going to do. And then he was like, but that died. died. <laughs> and carols sung by bewitched suits of armor when anyone passes. But Filch had to remove Peeves from where he was hiding in one of the suits, adding his own colorful verses in the gaps. <laughs> And I want dirty Peeves Christmas carols. Peeves. Peeves. Not Ed Sheeran. Oh, yeah. I miss him. I know. Ugh. Chapter 23, The Yule Ball. In the UK version, when Ron and Harry notice that Hermione's teeth are straighter and smaller... She explains that she let Madame Pomfrey carry on shrinking them, even though her dentist parents wanted her to carry on with her brace. In the U.S. version, it says braces. Which, I kind of wondered if that was a typo. Do they call them brace? Do they say, like, my teeth brace? Braces. Unless she's only got one on one level of her mouth. She's huh. got a maxillary or mandibular brace. Oh, Oh, for being one of the most like popular book series, the editors are kind of shit. Yeah. True. Interesting. So brace or braces, we knew what it meant. Let's go on to our favorite moments from chapter 23. But it's also rowdier because everyone's super excited about the ball. Well, yeah, teenagers love balls. <laughs> <laughs> See, the movie version of Hermione's glow up, or as the kids say nowadays... I don't think they say that anymore. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, as the old people who think they're cool say nowadays. Yep. As I just did. It's like in all the teen movies in the 90s where literally it was the nerd girl and they just took off her glasses and they were like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. It was the equivalent of that. I wanted to see the transition I wanted the Princess, Princess Diaries. Diaries. I wanted the Princess Diaries transition. I did. Huge frizzy hair that breaks brushes mm -hmm. into sleek and beautiful. That was a huge transformation. Yeah. That is visual. And it's movies. It's a movie. Mm -hmm. You can go so visual with that. But they all Hollywoodized Hermione ahead of time. And they made her beautiful. And she is beautiful. And that's yeah. fine. Hermione can be pretty. But she didn't care that much about it, so she didn't bother styling her hair. Mm -hmm. She should have had big teeth that got fixed. And she's just constantly loaded down with books. So this should have been a change, and it wasn't. She was in an ugly dress. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Rawr. So you took already pretty Emma Watson and just put her in an ugly dress. <laughs> and expected us to be like, oh, she's so beautiful. And we're just like, what the fuck is that dress? Right. Those aren't dress robes. It's not blue. And it's frilly. I don't what like the frilly. Fuck? Come on, Anyway, guys. though. Moving on. <sighs> we got to get off this topic or we're never getting off this topic. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And they pass by Harry and Moody creepily uses his x-ray vision to look through Harry's robes. Ew. He comments on his socks, causing Harry to grin and explain that Dobby the house elf knitted them for him. Parvati also finds this creepy and says that that eye shouldn't be allowed. But he literally looked through his robes to see his socks. Like, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just like broke glass in my head that I really didn't want broken. <laughs> sorry. I didn't even think of it that way. I thought like, I don't know. I thought his shit hiked up or something. You could see his so like, what? X-ray vision. Oh, I don't like that. Good thing Dobby didn't knit him boxers. What? Well. <laughs> ugh. Huh. They continue on wondering why Karkaroff is so worried and why he and Snape are on first name terms. And how did Snape get the job of world's biggest cock block? I mean, if he can't have any, no one else can. Very true. <laughs> During the conversation, Snape is cutting between carriages to catch the copious caches of canoodling coeds concealed confidentially. Crikey. <laughs> Harry and Ron go back inside to see Parvati and Padma with a crowd of Bobaton boys. Dermstring boys. Bobaton boys. Dermstring boys. Bobaton. Rabbit. Duck. <laughs> Rabbit. Duck. Rabbit. Duck. <laughs> Duck. Duck. Fuck. <laughs> 
Duck, duck, fuck. Duck, duck, fuck. Now we come to chapter 24, Rita, Skeet, and Scoot. No differences now, but enjoy our favorite parts of the episode that cover chapter 24. And I'm sorry, fuck you for calling him a part human. That's just shitty. But anyway. This bitch right here can just eat all the dicks. Because fuck her. She might honestly. like that, though. So she, Maybe. Fine. She can go spelunking in Hagrid's mother's vagina. How about that? I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad you did. So, <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Voldemort declares the time to be close now in that truly vague and confusing way, while the camera cuts back to the unsettled sleeping Harry as Voldemort's voice says, Harry, at last, you're just in time for part cheesy. Okay, he might not have said that last part, but it would have been funny if he had. Right? Harry would have been so confused. <laughs> exactly. Hermione is shocked that Bagman is willing to cheat and also wonders if he's offered Cedric help too. Harry lets her know that he asked that question as well and he isn't. Well, I am just scandalized. And then there's Ron who's just completely <laughs> indifferent to whether or not Cedric's getting help. He's right. just like, Cedric who? <laughs> Fuck Cedric. <laughs> I love how in the book, Harry calls her that Skeeter cow and then yeah. just goes, oops, sorry, professor. And Dumbledore's like, I have temporarily gone deaf and haven't any idea of what you're saying. <laughs> like, we're over here calling the bitch a cunt. Right. And granted, we're not 14 year old school children, but I just love the idea that cow is such a huge insult. Right. That you feel like you can't call a woman a cow in front of your headmaster, especially when she's a freaking cow. She definitely is. Yeah. Somebody needs to tell that bitch to move along. <laughs> you go right to hell. That was so bad. Chapter 25. The Egg and the Eye. Once again, no differences. So here are our favorite moments. It doesn't even specify that it is the boys' prefect bathroom. It doesn't, no. So are there two separate prefects bathroom or do they just like schedule a time or do they all just bathe together like hogwarts wants them to bang right probably i'm just saying i mean they got a whole bunch of carriages for the yule ball so they had a place to go exactly i would feel remiss if i didn't point out the fact that hogwarts just kind of plays into teenage hormones just saying yeah mm -hmm. and then she somehow says cedric's name in the most unappealing way humanly possible to the point where it literally made our pats less attractive as she was saying it i'm not sure how that's even possible but she, she fucking did it yeah it was like cedric yeah, it was cedric. weird it's like what are you doing myrtle there was so much weird about this scene oh cringe but movie myrtle does not cover her eyes no not even a bit she actually slinks and glides closer and closer to Harry, somehow using my own personal patented seduction moves, but like way better as he nervously grabs the egg and holds it in front of himself. She tells him to go on and open it, egging him on, ha! as it were. <laughs> you crack me up. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I think that was a really good yoke. What are you talking about? Damn it. Moving on. I'm gonna let you keep going. Fuck you. That's uncalled for. <laughs> uncalled for. Because at first I think my ears are going crazy. And then they're not and you're just being a dick. At first I wasn't going to do it, but then I decided I'm a whisk it. Motherfucker. I make one fucking pun. Open the carton of eggs. <laughs> Moving on. Chapter 26. The second task. For the second task, the stands were filled to bursting point in the UK version, but to the bursting point in the US version. Again, with our extra word. That is literally just extra words. Yep. Extra the. Unnecessary. And our favorite moments from chapter 26. So it's possible that Hagrid's making up for blast-ended scroots. Or maybe he's just trying to prove he can do anything Professor Grubblyplank can. Anything Grubblyplank <laughs> can do, I can do better. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I can do anything better than Grubblyplank. No, you can't. You're probably right. 
Anyways, he continues the lessons on unicorns. He seems to know a great deal about them and even manages to catch two unicorn foals, which are pure gold. And I'm surprised that Harry didn't like jump on them right away. Didn't just niffler that shit? A little bit, a little bit distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Lavender and Parvati are completely delighted by them, and even Pansy Parkinson's just like, I can't let people know how much I love these things. <laughs> They're so beautiful. Must stay Slytherin, must not enjoy pretty unicorns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel that. Harry doesn't want to ruin Hagrid's mood, so he puts on a smile and pretends to be interested in the baby unicorns. Yeah, pretends. Pretends, right? Come on. Dude was totally interested in the baby unicorns. It's gold. It's gold. It's gold. Must seek it. <laughs> must seek it. <laughs> must seek it? Nope. I'm going with must seek it. <laughs> <laughs> must seek it. All right. And as we mentioned last week, Harry did basically have that encounter with the Grindelow in the book chapter as well, though... A couple actually grabbed a hold of him mm -hmm. as opposed to him doing the manly thing and avoiding it. Yeah. So apparently he wasn't that manly in the book. No, he was 14. That is true. He's boily. Oh, I don't no. like that. <laughs> no. No, Let's Ellen. just keep rolling. Moving on. Harry turns just in time to see a shark swimming right at him with his mouth ready to just chomp the fuck down. And he dodges out of the way, and it swims past him to Hermione as it bites through the rope tied around her ankle. But we then see that the shark is really just Victor with a shark head. <laughs> it's great. Do you have a shark head? Because I didn't notice anything. What? what? Shark head. Land shark. <laughs> <laughs> Candy Graham. <laughs> I do feel like it probably would have been better to just transform into a whole ass shark because, you know, they swim better. At least, you know, you would think they do. I don't know. Maybe then he wouldn't have had a spot for his wand or something. Maybe. Plus, since he still has a human body, he can take Hermione by the hand and swim off with her into the sunset. Or whatever you would call an underwater sunset. A sunderwater set? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with it. <laughs> sunderwater set. Sunderwater set. <laughs> <laughs> But the book did say he poorly transfigured himself. True. So yes, it probably would have been better to be a whole shark, but he was probably lucky he could even get his head transfigured. I mean, boy can't even read. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Chapter 27, Padfoot Returns. This isn't really that much of a difference. But the UK version has Rita Skeeter's article entitled Harry Potter's Secret Heartache in all caps when the US version just used regular capitalization. Really emphasizes that title there. But then also, when Karkaroff was trying to corner Snape in the potions classroom, he hovered behind Snape's desk for the rest of the period, preventing Snape slipping away in the UK version. But again, the U.S. version adds an extra word saying preventing Snape from slipping away. Because it was really unclear before then. We had to edit that. Just, you know, overcompensating again. Yep. But here are some more favorite moments. Come on. You're a grown-ass woman. You're a trash grown-ass woman. And she is grown such ass a trash woman. She is such trash a trash Rita. woman. Ugh. She's a garbage. <laughs> she is a garbage person. <laughs> garbage Skeeter. Snape says that even if Mad Eye Moody has joined his fan club, he will not tolerate Harry's behavior and will make him pay if he takes another nighttime stroll into his office. I mean, that sounds like a threat. I think it was a threat. Pretty sure that was a threat. It was totally a threat. Sound like a threat to me. I think he threatened him. Threat. Harry responds by turning back to his potion and saying he'll keep that in mind if he ever gets the urge to go in there. <laughs> oh, sassy Harry. We love you so. We've missed you. Crouch takes this opportunity to apologize that they haven't spoken, commenting on how he has heard his remarkable story so many times, like everybody fucking else in the world. Right, and that is a weird thing to apologize for. Maybe he should be like, hey, sorry I accused you of conjuring the dark mark. Right. Yeah. 
I don't know, just throwing that out there. Sorry I was a bit of a dick the first time we met, but you know how things are when dark marks are in the sky and anxiety's up there and, you know, bureaucratic bullshit. Yeah. All the good stuff. I'm kind of a mess. My bad. (laughs) Whoopsies. But no. (laughs) Sorry we haven't spoken. Yeah. Harry looks up at him in silence as Crouch says that life still goes on. And here they stand. Again, maybe it just make small talk, guy. I think that was him making small talk. <laughs> okay, we got to work on your small talk, guy. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> but Harry very cordially gives him a nice little smile and nods. Because what else are you going to do at that point? Yeah, what do you say? Yeah. He's like, yep, we stand here. We <laughs> keep on keeping on. We, we do indeed, sir. Yeah. Death sucks. <laughs> I miss my parents. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> yep. Good times. Good times. All right. Moving on. Chapter 28, The Madness of Mr. Crouch. In the UK version, Bagman says that Hagrid will have the hedges 20 foot high in another month with dashes in between the words. But the US version says he will have them 20 feet high. 20 foot high it's a 20 foot high hedge or the hedges are 20 feet high i feel like they both make sense i I feel like they definitely both make sense yeah but i know that my parents would get really agitated if they heard something like that they wouldn't like it if someone said something is 20 foot high or a 20 foot high something i know in america it's one foot anytime it goes above that it becomes plural so we say feet And that's probably why that was changed. But again, it's a stupid change. It's saying the exact same thing. Yeah, it's understandable. It's like they felt like they needed to change something. So they did. I feel as though a lot of these are that way where they were just like, "Mm, let's change something in this chapter for the hell of it. And I know that it became less Americanized the series as we go on. We talked about that last week. So maybe eventually we're just not going to have any real changes at all. And it's just going to be, yep, we're just republishing this. Do you think that that's because they were like, oh, uh, Americans aren't that dumb? Or, oh, we just don't care about the Americans because they're going to buy it anyways. I genuinely think that Americans hit a point where they became enamored with British slang and we wanted to learn it. What might be likely is that they started writing the books more for the American market because they were becoming so much more popular in the US than they were in the UK. Not by actual popularity, but just by sheer numbers of people who were buying the books. And the movies kind of took over too. And even though they stuck with a British cast, it was still American made. But they would throw in like bastardized British stuff. They would still say Happy Christmas, but then they called it Sorcerer's Stone in the first movie. For the American version. The British version movie is still Philosopher's Stone. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. (laughs) I imagine in those specific scenes when they were talking about the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Stone, they just did two takes. That's why we keep you around, Ellen, because you're smart. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, here's the favorite moments. Hello? Like, look at Dobby. Mm Mm-hmm. And Dobby's there just like, please don't bring me into this. <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> Dobby's putting on his sunglasses going, I don't know her. Dobby is not knowing her. Trying to like magically disappear into mm-hmm. the shadows. Yep. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't bring me up, please. And they just shove the extra food that they brought into Harry's arms and are like, get the fuck out. Except I imagine that in higher pitched, adorable voices. <laughs> Well, now that you said that, so do I. Where's your food? Get the fuck out! (laughs) Dobby is needing you to fuck off now, sir. (laughs) It's Ron. Yeah. Every time you say it's Ron, I just think you're saying it's you. (laughs) That's what I hear in my head. It's you. Ron and you. Synonymous. You, Hermione. Sir, not a Sir, not a Sir, Although he is also trying to make it a point to send regular food packages and updates to Snuffles. Although the updates are literally like, haven't heard back from Percy yet, nothing new going on. So, 
not that much of an update. No. Just nothing new. Here's some ham. Yep, basically. <laughs> Although, that's pretty good mail, if I have to say. Right? <laughs> I'd take it. No news is good news, and plus you get ham. So I have an idea. <laughs> ham. Hamagram. <laughs> it's a hamagram. <laughs> uh. Episode title. <laughs> what do you do when your friends are down? Hamagram. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're not Jewish. But then it could be a yamagram. <laughs> <laughs> but he runs into Cedric Diggory in the entrance hall and the two of them end up walking out to the Quidditch field together discussing what the task might be apparently Fleur thinks it has something to do with finding buried treasure and Harry's just like that's not so bad I'll ask Hagrid for a Niffler right like you need a Niffler you Niffler Accio Niffler bitches right <laughs> <laughs> what article you know, the one from the book about Hagrid being half-giant? Oh, you mean the thing the movie left out completely? That's the one. Yeah. Hagrid was so forlorn. Remember that? Vaguely. That's not how it happened in the movie, though. They left that out for 75-minute-long dragon chases and random scenes in the Forbidden Forest, where they now all are four years and about 50 pounds of combined hair later. <laughs> So Harry's trying to explain the situation to Dick Hole Snape. Dick and Hole Snape? Dick Hole Snape. Sounds like, like Black Hole Sun. <laughs> Dick Hole Snape, won't you come? Anyway. Chapter 29 The Dream. So, UK version Hermione wants Harry to learn the impediment jinx next to slow things down that might attack him. But in the US version, it calls it the impediment curse. So jinx versus curse. Which is completely unnecessary. Yet another unnecessary one. I agree. But anyways, so that's it for chapter 29. So here are some of the funny ass shit from chapter 29. And Ron, of course, despite having heard this multiple times already, just does not want this to be the case. And is like, he was out of his mind? Mm-hmm. But out of his mind, though. And, but out of his mind, right? <laughs> and Harry's just like, yeah, but he was sanest when he was talking about Voldemort. And just drops the hard V, man. Like, Ron's over here like, you know who. Still mm -hmm. scared to say it. And Harry's just like, nope. He Voldemort. Was cool with Voldemort. <laughs> Voldemort. Just drops the V. Just drops the V. <laughs> Pops the V. <laughs> just drops the V. He then stares up into the rafters, just daydreaming for a moment. Remember when life was simple? <laughs> when I was just bullied by my aunt, uncle, and cousin, and I didn't have people trying to kill me? <laughs> That's at least what I think was going on in his head. Right. Ah, uh, the good old days. The good old days. <laughs> Then he has to stop and turn back and stand in front of the gargoyle, and he's like, shit. <laughs> I tried sherbet lemon again, and it didn't work. That must not be the password anymore, although he does actually try it again right here, just in case he said it weirdly. Or... Why not? Maybe you changed it back. We don't know. The gargoyle still doesn't move, so... <laughs> I just got the image of Harry going, sherbet lemon one. <laughs> <laughs> sherbet lemon two. <laughs> Fuck, Sherbert Lemon 75. After a while, he thinks maybe it wasn't Sherbert Lemon after all. <laughs> Chapter 30, The Pensive. Back to no differences, but we do have some funny moments. But Dumbledore insists that they are done, basically telling the minister to fuck off. That's what I heard. Right? The cabinet is emitting a come-hither blue light that calls to him. Come. Come, meddle. And who is Harry to say no? Yeah, if he said no, who is Harry anymore? He's no longer Harry. Right? He's some weird bitch that doesn't meddle. Right? And then the book is a lot shorter. <laughs> a lot shorter. <laughs> So Harry, he, he like apologizes. He's just like, sorry, professor, I was meddling. You totally caught me. 
So really, he's just sorry he got caught. Let's be honest. It's probably a little bit of both. Maybe. He's a good kid. Yeah. He's more sorry he got caught. Probably. (laughs) This is what makes Harry realize that the substance, like the swirling silver stuff that he was like, I don't want to touch that with my hand, but I'm going to accidentally touch it with my nose. Brain jizz. Yeah, brain jizz. Yeah. It's actually Dumbledore's thoughts. That's just creepy. It is, especially since he shows him how he does it and he takes his wand and points it straight to his temple and literally just pulls that silvery strand. And then he adds it to the bowl and it's a thought about Harry. So Harry's face starts swirling around mm-hmm. in the bowl. It is really cool, but it's a little creepy. A little bit, yeah. So basically, Harry was swimming around in Dumbledore's brain jizz. Well, now you made it creepier. Yeah, it's kind of what I do. Mm-hmm. Have we met? <laughs> Let's just keep rolling. Chapter 31, the third task. This chapter actually has a few differences. Just like in chapter 29, it's the impediment jinx in the UK version versus the impediment curse in the US. In the UK version, Harry's considering doing revision in the library while the other champions visited with their families until Cedric popped his head out and told him they were waiting for him. The U.S. says research instead of revision. I've also seen them use revision instead of studying. We've talked about that in previous books, especially when Hermione was making them timetables, which was study schedules, but revision schedules. So, yeah. Also, the score going into the third task has Harry and Cedric tied on 85 points in the U.K. version while the U.S. version says tied with 85 points. Again, we're just looking at other changes that seem kind of unnecessary. Unnecessary changes. Theme of this episode. Ch-ch-ch-changes. <laughs> well, I think the episode title is ch 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 changes then. <laughs> we can, let's do that. I think it's changes in parentheses, ch 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 but yeah. Mm-hmm. And now here are our favorite moments covering chapter 31. And I was just like, Dumbledore is not the one who brought him into the mix. Yeah. That was 100% Voldemort. That was his choice. That was entirely his choice. And that was the fate he decided for himself, essentially. So good job. Good job, Harry. You know who's the bad guy here. Right. You know who's the bad guy. As opposed to, you know who's (laughs) the bad guy. That's funny. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Same sentence both ways. I love it. I know. It's great. (laughs) There you go. I mean, maybe the curse addled his brains, but he could just want attention. He could just be whining like a bitch. I'm Harry fucking Potter, the boy who lived. Look at me. (laughs) Look at me. I'm the bee's fucking knees. Pay attention to me. Mm. Mrs. Weasley then gives Hermione a very chilly hello. Just super stiff about it and harry's just like uh mrs weasley (laughs) you didn't believe that rubbish that rita skeeter wrote about me and hermione did you because she's not my girlfriend especially after she just admonished amos diggory exactly so (laughs) mrs weasley's just like oh of course i didn't of course i didn't but she also becomes considerably warmer towards hermione again so well she did kind of believe it. A little bit. She got a little mama bear about that one. We talked mm. about that before. Yep. Yeah, we get from A to Z, but it's more like A, F, L, B, Q, P, X, C. I'm not going to do the whole alphabet out of order, Z. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But anyway, it stumbles and Harry's just like, hold on a second. You're not a Dementor. You're a Boggart. He lifts his wand again and does the Boggart spell. Ridiculous! This maze is ridiculous. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Coming on to chapter 32, flesh, blood, and bone. These two chapters were the same. So here's our top moments. But what is the same is that in both the book and the movie, the Port Key Quad Wizard Cup brought them to a graveyard. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the same. We should have a bell every time something's the same. (laughs) I feel like... (laughs) We're not going to have a lot of bells going on from here. (laughs) Nope. But in both the book and the movie, they are in a graveyard. Ding. Ding. (laughs) There's your bell right there. 
Oh shit, Ellen, it's a bunch of dead riddles. This must be where jokes go to die. I love it when you join in the punning tomb foolery. Oh, I think I've made a grave mistake. Keep it coming, I'm just dying for you to make some more puns. I'll pass. Can't dig yourself out of this one. Oh, that remains to be seen. This has been quite the undertaking. Wow. Wow. Can we just keep rolling? Aw, oh, but we were killing it. Anyway. But before introductions can be made, Voldemuppet, obviously, having gone without his nap today, commands Wormy to kill the spare. I'm loving the fact that Wormy rhymes with Kermy when you're talking about <laughs> Muppets. I just need to say that for you. Oh, Wormy. <laughs> You ruined it for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric can keep going. It's okay, Cedric. But no, Cedric dies. Dedrick. Dedrick. Oomba Loomba Diggory's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that made me dizzy. Oh, I have verses to it. Oh my god. My husband is dark and twisted. Wow. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Ch -ch -ch Chapter 33, The Death Eaters. There were also no differences here, thank God. So now on to more of our favorite funny-ass shit. But then he reaches into the pockets of his robes and pulls out a wand. It'd be awesome if he, like, pulled out five bucks and was like, <laughs> sweet, I totally forgot these were in here. Right. <laughs> five galleons, you mean? Well, yes. And at this point now is when the murder munchers start showing up. Mm -hmm. But it's not with, you know, smoke ponies or whatever you would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you would call that. I was, I'm like, I have no idea. When I was trying to write that summary of how they shot down in this, I was like, I don't know really how to describe this. Because... Yeah. Plus, you got to think, I mean, little Voldy Muppet probably couldn't like go to the bathroom and stuff on his own so he had to wipe his butt and everything probably too i didn't need to think about that actually well now you are hmm. you're welcome so yeah useful useful a little bit sure so voldemort points and waves his wand at wormtail's stub and suddenly a new shiny silver hand grows forth from it yay new hand yay Excellent. and we're gonna just keep rolling with no differences Enjoy our top moments from chapter 34. Oh, you did a thing. I gotta say, I am interested in when they would have learned had Lockhart not set up the dueling club. Because the way Voldemort says it in the movie, at least, he says it like, oh yeah, you know how to duel, right? Like, like it was just assumed that he knew. In the book, he asks, but in the movie, he's like, you know how to duel. Right. Of course you do. You're 14. You must know how to handle... Your wand. Your wand. <laughs> You're welcome. I kind of wish we would have had like a murder muncher laugh. Right? In the movie. They were just there. Yeah. Even if it was just a ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> just one guy. Just crab. Just ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> exactly. That's what I need in my life. In the movie, Harry groans and tries to keep himself up just as Voldy lunges at him knocking him to the ground and hitting him with a high-pitched crucial. <laughs> That's what he does. I know. He's like... I just love your impression. <laughs> I'm glad they amuse you. Gleefully, the pale-ass lord watches Harry squirm under the curse before giving him a small respite. It's interesting because he starts the curse off with crucio and he ends it with crucio. He says Crucio again to stop it. Is that what he said? Yeah. I thought it was something else, but it's hard to understand. Well, he because he does his Crucio. <laughs> like, Maybe it was Crucion? Crucio. <laughs> <laughs> chapter 35, Veritaserum. There is one difference in this chapter. Fudge and Dumbledore try to prize Harry from Cedric's dead body in the UK version when the US version says pry. Here are some more favorite moments. And Moody just completely shatters this notion when he's like, no, I did that. What? And Harry plays a slightly backward game of who me? Could it be? Because <laughs> it was more like who you? That can't be true. Ah, uh, he's a poet and he didn't know it. 
That was a roller coaster ride from start to finish. And none of that was explained in the movie. None of it. None of it. Thank Damn you. it. They didn't even include Bertha Jorkins. Bertha Jerkins? Who? <laughs> right. It probably didn't have to last all that long because it's not long after that that Lord Voldemort just fucking shows up at the house. Ding dong, Dark Lord calling. Right? <laughs> exactly what I was about to say. That he just, doorbell rings, Barty Crouch Sr. opens the door and Wormtail's like holding the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and that had to have just been a whole shit ton of what the fuck. Right. For a brief moment until he's instantly put under the Imperious Curse himself. Yeah. Chapter 36, The Parting of Ways. Not an actual difference here, but a little fun fact. The original UK version had this error that has since been corrected. Forgive me, Dumbledore, but I've heard of a curse scar acting as an alarm bell before. Versus, forgive me, Dumbledore, but I've never heard of a curse scar acting as an alarm bell before. It's a good thing they caught that, because that kind of completely changes that sentence. <laughs> it does. Just a bit. And now for our top moments from chapter 36. It starts off, which I guess did technically happen in the movie, when mm. Dumbledore leaves. Oh, ding. I get a ding. <laughs> it's my only ding the whole episode. <laughs> but he also uses his wand to tie him up. Yeah, which doesn't happen in the movie. So And asks Minerva to stand guard. Also doesn't happen in the movie. Right. Is there an anti-ding? <laughs> <laughs> a dong. A dong. <laughs> There's a lot of dongs in this episode. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a regular dong fest. Now you're just being a ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> this time it was the full Monty. It was the full... It wasn't just the bowl. It yeah. was the bowl the more. Exactly. Did you just call Voldemort a... A, a bowl? A I bowl. did. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. All right. Just checking. But Harry also lists off McNair, Avery, Knott, Crab, Goyle, and Fudge is like, they've all been cleared. You're merely repeating names of those who were acquitted of being Death Eaters 13 years ago. You could have gotten them off of any of the files where people were documenting the trials. Yeah, except I didn't. I got them from Voldemort's fucking mouth when he said, hey, sup, Crab. Hey, what's sup, up, Goyle? <laughs> Jesus. I saw them with my own goddamn eyes. I was in the Quad Wizard Tournament this year. When do you think I had time to do fucking research for this particular night? Right? You think I'm just... Do I look like the type that does research? Maybe Hermione did it for me and fed me this information, but you don't hear her saying anything because that's not how it happened. I don't even want to say how'd that go again because I don't want you to do it again. I don't think again. I could do that again. I don't want you to do that again ever, please. And now the final chapter. Chapter 37, The Beginning. From our final chapter, and the one containing our trivia question from last week, in the UK version, Hagrid served the Golden Trio doughy biscuits for their tea. As we already mentioned, the US version calls them cookies, not biscuits. Yeah, we think of biscuits as bread-type thingies. Like dog biscuits. Or like dog biscuits, which are like dog cookies, so... I mean, that's the closest we get to doing that one accurately. I mean, we do have cookies in the UK, but they're a completely different sort of thing. What are they? They're really soft here. It's calling something a really doughy biscuit would be defining a cookie, essentially. Huh. Our cookies can come crunchy, doughy, soft, chewy. We have a variety of cookies. I want a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> And now, here are our final favourite moments from the episodes covering Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. It was only a matter of time. Yeah. But as long as they have Dumbledore, he's not too worried. Way to jinx everyone, man. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> did you just... What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Thanks a lot, Hagrid. Classic horror movie trope. Why would you say that? <laughs> that Aww. and this makes harry smile for the first time in several days well of course it I does know, Funkle Hagrid, how do we not get this scene uh because the movie just wants him to be a brainless oaf Ugh, new all. Mm -hmm. actually that's probably multiple directors faults but new all. in this particular case new all. 
the real Mad Eye Moody is sitting there, looking very, very twitchy. Yeah, like jumps at every single little sound. Understandably, probably refuses to eat or drink anything that he didn't prepare himself on an even greater level than before. I was gonna say he was already doing that. Now yeah. it's probably to an insane degree. Yeah, it's probably like dosing the house elves with Veritas serum. <laughs> like, did you poison this? <laughs> Did you put poison in my goblet of pumpkin juice? <laughs> He's not Dumbledore. Chill out. Jesus. And it's not the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Got and, a little carried away. And the movie, we don't even see Mad-Eye Moody, so. Yeah. But if we did, that's what would have happened. That's pretty much, yes. We then see Harry watching from the corridor as everyone hugs and says their goodbyes. Smiling slightly, he tries not to think about all the questions still hanging out in his head. Like, I don't know, like... How did Barty Crouch Jr. escape the ban? What the hell is Priori and Cantatum? And where the actual fuck did the butterflies come from during Bobaton's entrance all those months ago? Because that never got answered. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Lactating butterflies. It answers all of them. It answers none of them. How did Barty Crouch Jr. escape the ban? Magic. What the hell is Priori and Cantatum? Magic. Where the actual fuck did the butterflies come from during Bobaton's entrance all those months ago? magic it works i mean yeah it works but not in a clear and concise storyline oh you wanted clear and concise you got to read the books <laughs> that's right this is the movie where everything's made up and the books don't matter <laughs> <laughs> rita skeeter can quite literally turn into a beetle she is an unregistered animagus that kind of shit right there will get her in so much trouble. And I've figured it out. And mm -hmm. as she's saying all of this shit, she pulls a jar. A sealed glass jar, like you said. Hopefully she pokes some holes in the top. Hopefully there's some holes. And this is my favorite part of the whole thing. A sealed glass jar containing a few twigs and leaves. <laughs> well, yeah, you gotta put them in their own natural environment. I love, I love that she gave her a beetle environment. <laughs> Some twigs and leaves. Rita's in there like, this is just like the fucking forest. <laughs> but anyway, this will bring us to our Potter pondering, which is what are some of your favorite moments covering the second half of Goblet of Fire? Again, either from our podcast or the book and film in general. Find the post on our Facebook page and share your thoughts. Or call us at 216-526-6792 and leave your response as a voicemail. Make sure you start off telling us your name and then go into your answer. We really look forward to reading and hearing them. This will bring us to our sorting hat story, which is from Sonia Hart. She writes, I can't remember my wand specifically, but I'm a Hufflepuff and my Patronus is a hedgehog. Years ago, I watched an interview that Katie Couric of the Today Show had with JK Rowling and they were discussing the fifth book, which was due to be released soon. In one part of the interview, Rowling talked about how upset she was killing off a certain character. She cried while writing this, but of course wouldn't reveal whose death it was. At that point, I had seen the first movie and enjoyed it enough, but I hadn't caught the Harry Potter bug yet. After seeing the interview, I was so curious to find out what character she was talking about I picked up the books to start reading and get caught up for the fifth one's release. I was hooked ever since. And the best part was Harry Potter gave me my love for reading. I hated reading as a kid and even into adulthood. I never found anything interesting. But after this series, I found out how much I love books and it's only grown since. Thank you so much for sharing your Sorting Hat story with us, Sonia. I love knowing just how many people... Harry Potter has reignited or even just started that love of reading for. Absolutely. I love actually giving it to some of my students at school who don't like to read and watching them completely turn on a dime and love to read after that. Right. And if any of our other keepers out there listening would like Ellen and Katie to read your Sorting Cat story on a future episode, you can email it to them at justkeeprowling at gmail.com. Let them know your house, wand, Patronus, how you got into Harry Potter, and anything else that you might want to share with them. This week's trivia question is, where does Harry hide at Privet Drive to listen to the news without his aunt and uncle knowing? 
The first person who responds with a correct answer and the code word hashtag it changes every day will get a sticker. Another way to get a sticker is to rate and review us through iTunes or Facebook. Make sure to email us at justkeeprolling at gmail.com to let us know you did, and we'll get back to you to figure out which sticker you want and where to send it. Don't forget to find us and follow us on Facebook at JKR Podcast and Twitter and Instagram at Just Keep Rolling. Following us on Podbean at justkeeprolling.podbean.com will get you the episode as early as possible and give you a leg up in answering the trivia question. Make sure to check out our website at justkeeprolling.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to help us continue creating more content, you can support us as a patron and get extra perks on patreon.com slash justkeeprolling. As always, any support you can give is greatly appreciated. Yay for pre-recordings. Thank you for that, Katie. And also, thank you to our amazing patrons for joining us. I really appreciate you helping me get this episode recorded while Katie is recovering. So thank you for being here and jumping on this Zoom call to help me out. Well, we kind of can't say no to you, so you're welcome. I will take that as one of my superpowers. <laughs> not blackmail or anything like that. I did not blackmail. I, I have nothing to hold over your head for this. Just my love for you. <laughs> Is that blackmail that I'll stop loving you if you don't do this with me? <laughs> I mean, absolutely. <laughs> it's not true, though. But yes, Max, Ashley, Sarah, Jackson, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Always. This is Sarah saying bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you, everyone. Catch you on the flip side. And on the flip side next time hopefully next week like normal depending on how katie's doing we might have to play that by ear but we are going to be starting harry potter and the order of the phoenix talking about the first half of chapter one dudley demented and the corresponding film scenes thanks for listening we hope you hear us again i'm katie i'm ellen until the next time just, just keep, keep rolling, rolling.